Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together to study again this morning. Uh, we thank you that you've helped us work through these technical problems from this storm last night and uh, got everything back up and running. Please be with us now in the, in the study. We ask for the presence of your Holy Spirit, and we ask that your Spirit would accompany this message wherever it might go throughout the, the Internet world. And we thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. There's three points from the Sabbath sermon that I want to follow up on. I want to go back to them and, and expand them. Um, but I mean, I, I'll, at most I'll only get to one of them today. But they're, they're big points before we move any further on transcending into the false prophet of the United States. We've been dealing in, recently with the King of the South, Russia. Now we're taking up the United States, but there's some issues that came up on Sabbath some truths that I want to develop a little bit further. But before I do, I want to lead into, uh, I want to put in place another line of thought. Um, and the, the first quote is from Desire of Ages, page 458-459. And what I'm wanting to pull out of this quote is the emphasis on the weight of evidence. We're supposed to form our, build our faith based upon the weight of evidence. God does not compel men to give up their unbelief. Before them are light and darkness, truth and error. It is for them to decide which they will accept. The human mind is endowed with power to discriminate between right and wrong. God designs that men shall not decide from impulse, but from weight of evidence. Carefully comparing Scripture with Scripture. Had the Jews laid by their prejudice and compared written prophecy with the facts characterizing the life of Jesus, they would have perceived a beautiful harmony between the prophecies and their fulfillment in the life and ministry of the lowly Galilean. Many are deceived today in the same way as were the Jews. Religious teachers read the Bible in the light of their own understanding and traditions, and the people do not search the scriptures for themselves and judge for themselves as to what is truth. But they yield up their judgment and commit their souls to their leaders. The preaching and teaching of the Word is one of the means that God has ordained for diffusing light, but we must bring every man's teaching to the test of Scripture. Whoever will prayerfully study the Bible, desiring to know the truth, that he may obey it, will receive divine enlightenment. He will understand the Scriptures. If any man willeth to do his will, he shall know of the teaching. In this particular series, I think this is the third time that I've referred to this particular quote. Um, and it's just, it's, it's one of the primary arguments for me, it's the weight of evidence. Um, so this line up here, I, w I started filling it out this morning. Um, I'm hoping you can follow along with the notes. I hope that if you're watching on the internet, you've downloaded the notes. Um, I'm, but I didn't complete it, and I'll see if I can complete it. It's a little bit complicated to, to, to do some of the illustrations on this line and I know that it's small print for those in this room and maybe for those that are watching online. Um, but what it is, okay, in terms of laying out the line of history of Future for America as a ministry beginning in 1989, this is just a, a what I'm calling a straight line, okay. There and I'm purposely saying this, this is just walking through the history of 1989 and marking waymarks in the history of Future for America of this ministry. But it's not bringing in, I'm not going to even try to bring in at this point, um, four important witnesses to this line, okay? But I'm going to tell you what the four other witnesses are for future reference that you can test. S some of the the chr chronological, the numerical things I'm going to put up here, they connect with the history of the Millerites. That's one witness. They connect, although I know that Josiah Litch's understanding of Revelation 9 is the Millerites, but I'm making a distinction. Let me do it this way. They connect with the history of Samuel Snow and the Midnight Cry message. That's one witness. They connect with the history of Josiah Litch and his prediction his understanding of Revelation 9, and they connect with Ezekiel's Josiah prophecy. Those are three witnesses. 
that would go to uphold what we're going to put on the board here. And the fourth witness that would go there is a concept, I guess is the way to say it, chiasms, okay? Because when you take the history of Josiah in Ezekiel or Josiah Litch or Millerite history, um, or, or Samuel Snow's history, you can bring parallels to this history that we're going to put up here. Uh, but in each of those histories, you'll find chiastic structures that you also find in this history. And I'm not going to deal with the chiasms in this history. The first thing I'm going to do to lead into last Sabbath study is just do what I'm calling a straight line of um, this movement. And it's pretty astounding to me, okay? Of course, we began studying Daniel 11, 40 to 45, and the prophetic pattern, the timelines, before 1989. But it's 1989 where Daniel 11, 40, the collapse of the Soviet Union is marked. We marked that as the time of the end. But we didn't begin studying on November 9th, 1989. We were already studying prior to that time period. And that's worth noting if you're going to deal with the chiastic structure that Bronwyn put in play on Sabbath, okay? It doesn't just start right at November 9th. It precedes because she has other waymarks that seem to have variables in them. And if you lock yourself into November 9th, they don't quite fit. But if you understand that we were studying before November 9th, there's some wiggle room. You may not understand that, okay? 1989. We begin studying this message, but where I'm going to point you to here is June 22nd, 2011, we get the money to build this school, and there's no way that we expected to get that kind of money. Um, a person that I'd never met contacted me in the phone call, he, he asked if there, we had any financial needs. I had just calculated the idea of starting a school that, that we'd le need at least $150,000 to start. We had $15,000 worth of other needs that we knew about. I didn't know the guy from the man in the moon. He asked if we had any needs and because I had just been thinking about that in the past few days, I said, well, we have $165,000 worth of needs. We need $150,000 to start this school and uh, $10,000 for some video equipment and $5,000 for, for some work in Africa. And he, he says, I'll put a check in the mail tomorrow. Okay, $165,000. That was given on June 22nd, 2011. And the reason I'm pointing that out is that it's exactly three years later from there to here um, June 22 up there. That's June 22, that's June 22, exactly three years later that we're having our first camp meeting here dealing with the light that was opened up, which we call the Midnight Cry message. The light of Ezra 9, we've, we've identified three primary waymarks in the development of the Midnight Cry message. The first came at the end of Habakkuk's tables, and up here... This history here is Habakkuk's tables. I'm going to put HT for Habakkuk's tables. Began on June 25th, 2012 and ended on March 24th, 2013. And at the end, right at the very end of this history, um, the light of Ezra 9 was given to us. I put it in the public record at the end of Habakkuk's tables. If you watch through that, those 95 presentations, you can see me starting to address the light of Habakkuk's, of Ezra 7, 9, the first step in the Midnight Cry message. And what that did for us is we realize that from the first day of the first month to the first day of the fifth month, and onward to the tenth day of the seventh month was 120 followed by 70. And the lights began to come on. That's based upon Ezra 7, 9. And we began to see that all the 120s in the Bible get plugged into this history. And we understood this was 9-11, this was the midnight cry, and this was the Sunday law. 
So we understood the 120s got plugged in here, the 70s got plugged in here, and then things began to open up. Point is, right in this history here at the end of Habakkuk's tables is when this particular light opened up and the first camp meeting um, that uh, we deal with this is, it was called, it, this is in your notes on, on the bottom of page one under Ezra 7-9. Um, the first one where we deal with it was called Eating the Hidden Manna and it began on June 22nd, exactly three years after we received the money for this school. Okay, and from June 22nd, 2014 to October 13th, 2018. See, here's, here's where it gets a little bit tricky in, in illustrating this. I, I haven't got it done yet. Over here, this line here should just keep going, all right? But I wished I was at the Baptist College in Southern California, the Baptist College, they would rent a room, and the, the room in this college, at this level, all the way around, every wall, and it was much bigger than this room, had a whiteboard. So you could do a, a line 40 foot long if you wanted to. This line here is just an extension of that line over there. So from June 22nd, 2014, okay, it would bring us down, I could take you down, what I'm saying is, to a waymark over here called October 13th, 2018. October 13th, 2018 is where November 9th as a waymark is established. Okay, that's, that took place here. But my point is here. This is the part that's hard to show. If this line was over here, then I would tell you from this first camp meeting, beginning here, to October 13th, 2018, is 1,564 days. And 1,500, uh, no, 1,574 days. And 1,574 days is 4 times 391 plus 10. Okay, from this date, June 22nd to October 3rd, I'm going to put 10-3 here, 2018. October 3rd in this room, 2018, is where November 9th was put in place. But it wasn't established until October 13th because truth is established upon the testimony of two. And there's 10 days here between this way mark and this way mark. And from June 2nd, 22nd, 2014 to October 3rd, 2018 is 1,564 days, which is 4 times 391. Okay, this one, 10 days later, I'm saying that this 10 days is a testing period. Okay, and it, it, is, a, it is a testing period because what you're tested by at one level from here is there's a rule that's happening here. November 9th is put in place here. It's established here on a second witness, but there is a phenomenon that occurs often in sacred history, and what is that phenomenon? The false precedes the true, okay? Here, November 9th was correct. It was a, it was a genuine way mark, but it was counterfeited. There was, 20-some cor corrupted ideas connected with it and the testing process over this message of November 9th was underway. And here, November 9th is confirmed with a second witness. And so anyway, from this date, if you think it is an accident that it's four times 391 to get here 
and 4 times 391 plus 10 to get here, you're not studying from the weight of evidence. Okay, but, but here at the, here's where Ezra 7, 9 is opened up. The first camp meeting is on June 22nd, and it was called, in, from the floor people, it was eating the hidden manna. And the second was called, Behold the Bridegroom Cometh. That's over here, from October 19th, and it ended on the 25th. This meeting and this meeting are 120 days apart. And we noticed that, we noticed that, but we never thought any about it. This is like one of the first things that we noticed that, hey, that's kind of, that's kind of a nice coincidence that in between this camp meeting and this camp meeting is 120 days, but it never meant anything at that time because we hadn't seen the preponderance of evidence. That, the end of it's in your notes. Oh, okay. Um, it's, uh, Behold the Bridegroom Cometh was October 19th through 25th okay. of 2014. Sure, it. It's on page one under Ezra 7 9. I'm just going down through the notes. Um, I'm, it's like the fifth line from the bottom. The meetings, the, this, the fourth line says the meetings were separated by 120 days. Then we're going to take this message that's opening up of Ezra 7 9, and you've got to get this. You need to see this. This needs to sink into you. Ezra 7 9 has been opened up here, and we're going to present it at this camp meeting, and then we present it at this camp meeting, and we just happen to see that it's 120 days apart, and then we're going to take it across the waters to a, a, a camp meeting in Germany on December 28, 2014. And sometime thereafter, we realized that that was 70 days after this meeting. Now here's my point. What was opened up by Ezra 7-9? The 120 and the 70. And as soon as we begin to put it into the record, these camp meetings are separated by 120 and 70. And there was no human effort to make that happen. All right, it, 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 these are things that we recognized after the fact. Okay, um, next page, page two. <laughs> December 17th, 2016. 16, the Raphia and Paneum arrives in Wales. Seven days later, I present it in a, a town in Holland called Bant, in Bant, Holland, on the 23rd. That's the first time Raphia and Paneum is presented publicly after we come to understand it on December 17th. From December 17th, 2016, to June 9th and 10th, 2018, okay? June 9th and 10th, this is the second Italian camp meeting. Here's where, once again, the ability to convey this straight line is a little bit tricky. From December 17th here, be going forward to this camp meeting. I'm gonna do it this way. Going this way. It comes into this camp meeting here, all right? From December 17th, 2016 to June 9 and 10. And on this camp meeting, the reason that I'm calling it June 9 and 10 is that the Sabbath in that camp meeting becomes a significant waymark. And Friday night is the 9th, Sabbath is the 10th. So I got 9th, 10th slash there for you. Okay, so from... The opening up of Rafi and Paneum to the second Italian camp meeting um, was 541 days. Now remember, this is coming in over here. And 541 days is 150 days plus 391 days equals 541 days. And the 150 and the 391 is one of these connections that you, that you can make with Ezekiel, with 
Samuel Snow, um, and in our history. So this, the 391, this is a number for Islam, okay, and the 150, the 150 is one of the, one of the three things that I want to get to on, on this presentation from Sabbath. I won't get to it today, but um, the 150, I'll put it in here. The 150 goes right here. Okay, why does 150 go here? This is 911. Because there's five months of hiding of Elizabeth, right? right? And there's five months of the first woe, 150 years of war. Okay, and uh, turn with me to Luke 2, just so I can put this in your mind while we're here. Luke chapter 2. And uh, Luke chapter 1 and verse 26. Okay, 126. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And, and you're going to have to settle this. I'm going to make a claim here. You'll have to settle this claim for yourself, whether it's valid or not. You know that... Uh, in verse 24, it says, And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months. So she's pregnant, and she's in hiding for five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among man, men. And in the sixth month, the angel of Gabriel, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city in Galilee named Nazareth. So in the sixth month now is being referenced. Galilee is a turning point. And this is where Mary is going to connect with Elizabeth. Okay, and if you read on down, when they get together, they're both going to prophesy. You've got a doubling of prophesying. Okay, so what I'm saying is that the sixth month is where Mary connects with Elizabeth. Okay, this being the sixth hour, this being the ninth hour, this being the sixth month, the midnight cry. So what you have to settle for yourself here now, if, uh, if prophetically, is I'm saying that the five months ends here, and that this is the sixth month, and that Mary and Elizabeth get together at the end of the sixth month. You can argue, no, it would be at the beginning of the sixth month, therefore it would be immediately after the end of the five months. But I'm saying, no, prophecy is instructing us that the end of these first five months is midnight. And that this is the midnight cry. And that there's one month in here, roughly. Okay, you follow me? You can argue from, from the text that maybe Elizabeth and Mary get together on the first day of the sixth month, and I'm saying no, they get together in the last day of the sixth month. And I'm doing that from other lines of prophecy, but I'm just keeping it simple, okay? Because another line of prophecy that we use is 150 years here of the first woe, and when that have 150 years is over, we have the sixth trumpet and the second oil arrive in history, do we not? And what do we have? We fo have four angels that are re released from the great river Euphrates for an hour and a month, a day and a year. Yes? Amen? Are you guys all with me? You with me? Okay, so at the end of five months, what do we have here? in terms of if we're going to lay Revelation 9 over it. We have the 391 year prophecy. 150, 391. 150, 391. I'm wanting you to see that this is part of the structure of prophecy. Okay, I'm also getting you prepared, hopefully, to see that in... I won't go there yet. I'm tempted to go there, but I won't. Just Based on the following of 391 from 150, not that there's any numerical value of that one month being 391.5. Okay. 
Just no, this is where the happens. prophecy, this is where the prophet, the, the angels are released for this period of time. Okay. And it ends on August 11th, 1840. Okay. And on August 11th, 1840, over here where it would end, it would go, this history would go till the door closes on October 22nd, 1844. This would be August 11th when these four winds are, re these four angels are restrained. And this would be October 22nd. Okay, all I want you to see here now, this four-year period from 1840 to 1844, we have identified as a, a manifestation of the power of God that's represented by the 1533. Yes? Okay. So in this history of the sixth trumpet, we have four years at the beginning. Uh, the sixth trumpet begins on July 27th, 1449, but it's telling the story there in that history of how Muhammad II brings down Constantinople. And when does Constantinople come down? In 1453, four years later. So you have a four-year period here. You with me? So you have a four-year period at the beginning of the 391, you have a four-year period at the end of the 391. But at the end of the 391, we've already established that it's a glorious manifestation of the power of God represented by 1533. Yes? yes. So Jesus illustrates the end from the beginning. So we're going to want to see a glorious manifestation of the power of God down here also. Yes? You following my logic? So the four years of the beginning of the sixth trumpet that began on July 27, 1449, it ends in 1453 when Islam blows down the what? The walls, the walls of Constantinople. And when you say walls of Constantinople, why do you say walls in the plural? They had a double wall. So where's the double wall that comes down in this history? It's a midnight cry. Okay, this is the walls. Okay, so there's got to be a, a manifestation of the power of God down here that's been typified here. Anyway, I probably shouldn't go there because I'm getting off subject, but I'm wanting you to see that from the opening up of Rafi and Paneum, it's 541 days till the, till the Sabbath phenomenon in this second Italian camp meeting, okay? Yes? It's probably just me, but I'm a little bit confused how we're tying in the four years of that 391.5 to Millerite history. I don't know why I'm confused about it, but I am. I, I recognize the date. Okay, I, I, I'll do this for you. Sorry. And it probably is you, yeah, but, but you probably represent lots of us, okay? So this is July 27th, 1449. Four, wind, four angels are released from the Euphrates. When are they going to be restrained? At the end of 391.5, right? And when did that take place? What's the date? August 11th. August 11th. 1840. Okay, I remember now. That's right. I got it. Okay, but I'm going to finish it off for those that didn't remember. To October 22nd, now they're restrained right here. I'm adding to this 1844. How many days from August 11th, 1840 to October 22nd, 1844? 1533. But this is not just four years here, a period of time. You can even mark it as a point in time. You can even mark it as a day. Because Sister White says that when the Lord gave the, the giving of the law and the mountain shook and the fire came down, that that was the most powerful manifestation of the power of God up to that point in history. Okay, So she's marking this is four years, but that's a day. And we have other witnesses to I, that this period of time is a waymark unto itself. Okay? 
so what I'm saying is this is the end of the second woe, but where does the sixth trumpet end? This is the beginning of the sixth trumpet and the beginning of the second woe. Where does the second woe end? The second woe ends here. Where does the sixth trumpet end? Here. Okay, so this four-year period at the end of the sixth trumpet, you're, you expect to see a four-year period at the beginning of the sixth trumpet, and that four-year period is to 14... 53, when the walls of Constantinople are broken down by Islam through the, the weaponry that was developed by Urban, the European. Okay, so a 391 here prophecy's put in place that was preceded by 150. That is the days, 541 days, from the opening up of Rafi and Paneum to the Sabbath phenomenon in the second Italian camp meeting. There was a Sabbath phenomenon in both Italian camp meetings, and the Italian camp meetings took place in the Waldensian Valley, a place that Sister White had been to twice, mm -hmm. and a place where she says that the Waldensians were the midnight cry for the Protestant Reformation. And in that place, we, while we were there, we went and visited the very school uh, the room where they would write out the tracts that they were going to hand out throughout Europe. And in that little tiny room, there was a giant table. It was a round table. If you can imagine, probably my arms being round, going that big. It was about this thick, solid rock. That was the table. It wasn't level. It was, it was a rock. That's where they wrote. That was the rock that the midnight cry message of the Protestant Reformation was founded upon. Just like this is the rock that the midnight cry message of Millerite history was founded upon. And we were there in the Waldensian Valley two times. The first Italian camp meeting and the second Italian camp meeting at the same place where Sister White was at. And so what I'm saying here, the reason I'm taking time for this, is this was purposeful that we had a doubling of the Italian camp meeting. Okay, and you can see these two Italian camp meetings are connected by a Sabbath phenomenon and these chronological connections. But I'm still dealing with the opening up of Raffia and Pinium, step two in the Midnight Cry message. Step one was Ezra 7.9. Step two is Rafi and Paneum. Okay, so um, from December 17th, 2016 to July 18th, 2020. And what's July 18th, 2020? That would be over here somewhere. What is July 18th, 2020? It's the midnight cry, let's say it that way. Okay? The midnight cry in our history, from here, December, going in a straight line. Remember, this line is supposed to be carried on. Pardon me? Midnight or midnight cry? Midnight cry. From here to here, it is 187 weeks. From December 17th, when the Rafi and Paneums opened up, to July 18th, 2020, is 187 weeks. And 187 is a symbol of July 18th. You with me? This is in your notes. Um, it was 77 weeks from December 17th, 2016, uh, to June 9th and 10th. To here, it was 77 weeks. <coughs> um, I don't know how to illustrate this. I'll put 77 weeks to here. From here to the Sabbath phenomenon, 77 weeks. And uh, from June 9th to July 18th is seven, 770 days or 110 weeks. From here to here is 110 weeks. And together, 
it's 187 weeks. Okay, this, I'm just showing you that there's a connection. This 187 weeks takes you here, but it, there's also a s connection to this camp meeting with 77 weeks. And that's there in your notes. Okay, now if you car count cardinally from December 17th um, to July 18th here. Okay, from here to here. Remember this is a straight line. Oh, I, I hope I don't... Now we're not counting weeks, we're counting the days, okay? And there's two ways to count days. Ordinally, the order, and cardinally. I think that might be another way of saying inclusive and exclusive. But if you count the days from December 17th, 2016 to July 18th, 2020, the days there, cardinally, is 1,309 days. 1,309 days. And 1,309 divided by 7 equals 187. Why aren't you just saying 187 weeks again? Why are you yeah, I, you, I am, but I, I'm, I'm going to show you a double variation. Uh, two ways to count, inclusive and, incl inclusive and exclusive, all both shed light on this, okay? The ordinal way to count, I'll put this on this side, is 1,310 days. And what's 1,310? It's the European way. We would say 1013. Europeans would say 1310. And it is? October 13th. And October 13th over here is where this date was confirmed. So cardinally you get 187 if you divide the days by 7. Ordin ordinally you get 1310 which is a symbol of October 13th the day that this date was established. Are you with me? Okay, um, and from December 17th here to November 9th, that's here, 11 9 2019, from here to here is 151 weeks. getting kind of cluttered, isn't it? And this is just a straight line, all right? Well, I want to remind you, I, I, I'm trying to do a... What you can do is you can start on that one and go all the way across. I thought about pulling them together. Or pulling them together. I, I thought about, but I, there won't be no next time. This is in the record book, and it's, it's in the record book so for good, all right? But yeah, you, you could put them on the board like that. But what I want to remind you is, once you have this straight line, then you can put, start bringing in chiasms that are there that I'm not addressing. Okay, and then and it becomes much more uh, convicting if you understand chiasms. Okay, the first Italian camp meeting over here. On June 2nd, the, it took place from May 22nd to June 6th, 2017. And on June 2nd, uh, the opening of the Sabbath was at 9-11. This is the opening of the Sabbath at the the Greenwich time in that place, Torre Pelle, Pelle Torre? Torre Pellici, Italy, was 9-11 that Sabbath. Um, we ended the closing prayer. That, that Friday night, um, I gave a presentation and the subject of the presentation was 9-11. And the closing prayer ended at 9-11. And 9-11 is when the Sabbath started. And none of that was planned. And even if it was planned, human beings couldn't pull it off. Okay? So this Sabbath phenomenon was, was pretty profound. And it took place on June 2nd. And June 2nd in the biblical calendar was Pentecost. Okay? So 
the camp meetings already started over here on May 22nd, so we have six days of preparation leading to this Sabbath. Okay, you got six leading to Sabbath. Yes. And it also says here in the notes that the sermon was also emphasizing 9-11. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I thought I said that, but yes. That's, I was presenting 9-11, Sabbath started on 9-11, and we ended right at 9-11, and all of this was recognized after the fact with the time stamps on the recording and stuff. Just even then, at that point, we weren't awake to what was happening with these footsteps in this movement. This is when it, we're really starting to wake up now. But it's Pentecost. On the biblical calendar, this is the day of Pentecost. And there's six days that come to the Sabbath, right? Six days of preparation. And how many people are in the upper room on Pentecost? 120. 120. 120. So, you have right here... In this application, you can show a 126 marked here. Okay, six days. It's it's not a it's not a valid way to add things, but it's there if you want to see it. You got six days taking you to the Sabbath, and at Sabbath, it's Pentecost, and at Pentecost, in the time of the disciples, you had 120 people in that upper room. So I'm putting 126 here because it's one of the numbers of these lines that can be recognized if you're willing. To see. And from June 2nd here to June 15th on the Julian calendar, that's over here, the second, the second Italian camp meeting, it's 391 days, point and a half days. Okay, so you got a 126 now leading into a 391. Or a 120 leading into a 391 if you, don't want to, if you want to disregard the 6. But this is one of the things that repeats in these lines. And I'm not bringing in with Ezekiel, Josiah Litch, and Samuel Snow at this point. I'm simply doing a straight line. From the first Italian camp meeting, that Sabbath phenomenon takes us to June 15th on the Julian calendar. Um, and... We'll get to what happens then. Um, 63 days later, from here, from here, if you go 63 days into the future, it takes you to August 11th. Let me see. August 11th. That would be in 2017. And then 63 days after that, this is one of the chiasms I said I wasn't going to mention, takes you to October 13th, 2017. October 13th is where the message of the 391 is confirmed, established upon a second witness. August 11th, also Islam. Um, and I'm saying the 391 is Islam, October 13th is Islam, August 11th is Islam, and in beginning in June 2nd, going forward to October 13th, 2017, you have 126 days, and it, this 126 days is a chiasm, and the center of that chiasm is August 11th. So what is that chiasm about? Islam. Islam. And what took place at the beginning of that chiasm? presentation that was emphasizing 9-11 and Islam. So this chiasm is what Brahman was teaching on Sabbath. These chiastic structures have a theme um, and the center point is generally the, or, or, I'm going to say always, the point of reference for what that theme is. But with this one it's easy to see. 9-11 is Islam, August 11th is Islam, and October 13th is a symbol of Islam because on October 13th, 2018, the second witness is the 391 that confirms that Islam is going to hit here. It confirms November 9th. That's what no October 13 does. It confirms November 9th. But we immediately see that after November 9th, 2019, 
is 252 days to July 18th. Okay, I see a hand. And also, uh, you mentioned on the June 2nd, 2017, the 9-11, you know, the Sabbath began. But on June 9th, you ended your opening sermon on that day also at 9-11. Yeah, I, I'm going to get... I'm going to get to that. I hope I might have passed over it, but yeah, that's I'm just going through the notes like you. Um, here, once again, the the closing prayer on that Sabbath was at 9/11, not planned. Observation after the fact. Okay. And I, so this is a this is a chiastic structure. It, it, it happened because there was technical problems. Otherwise, it would have ended earlier do you remember in yeah there was a there was a glitch in that yes. presentation the audio broke down for a while yep. and we stopped in the sermon and waited for them to get it re-engaged so they got it re-engaged I mean for probably 10-15 minutes yeah. and then we got back into the sermon and finished right on time and you're right I had forgotten about that had that not happened it wouldn't have ended then that was Angels yeah. messing with the equipment. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. But the, I said I wasn't going to do it, but I'll just point it out here. With 63 and 63, this chiastic structure, of course, is a 126. All right. And so we often see these phenomenon if you look for them. Let me give you what I mean by these phenomenon. September 7th of last year is 9, 7, and 9 times 7 is 63. So 63 takes us to November 9th. The, po the phenomenon I'm speaking about is that the n numbers on the way mark, 9, 7, they have a second witness right there. 9 times 7 equals 63. Okay, we, we see this repeatedly. And you have that here. Okay, you have this... Um, chiastic structure that begins here and it's 126 days long, the entire structure. It's 63 and 63. But it begins at Pentecost where you have 120 and you got, it be, it's the opening of the Sabbath, so you, the week is six days, it takes you to the Sabbath, so you can see the 126 right there on that day and then it extends out in a chiastic structure. Okay, that's it's just, it's unreal. All right. So in this first Italian camp meeting, you have this phenomenon, this Sabbath miracle. And in the second Italian camp meeting, once again, same, same story. And from here to here, 391 and a half days. Um, from June 2nd, takes you six days beyond the Sabbath. Okay. Can I about that? Yes. Some of the people that helped recognize that and put that together for the Italian camp meetings, I say this for them, if they were ever to listen to that, they once held those truths to be true. Yep. They helped establish them. And if they will just look back at that right now and realize that their current teacher is teaching them that really this ministry had nothing of value after 2012, 2014, and they admit that they've seen that, they helped us put it in place, they could start questioning maybe some of their direction they've been heading. Long, long after. I'm just saying. They oh, when, when, when I was going through this today, oh. yesterday, getting this organized, over the past week, but in the past couple of days, in earnest, um, some I had a, I had a page after page after page of these kind of emails at, at identifying all this that I was sorting out to get it into this. This is the clearest I've seen, by the way, in a straight line. If you haven't seen these notes, you need these notes, um, and much of it is from those people you're talking about. Yeah. Wake up! Yeah. <laughs> They're the ones that, that dug this, this information out initially, and then they threw it overboard as soon as they could put on their pants and party with the world. Um, it's, it's amazing. Okay, from June 2nd, 2017, takes you to six days beyond the Sabbath phenomenon of June 9th, the second Italian camp meeting. From there, 120 days takes you to October 13th. Okay, now we're still in 2018. 
what I just said is, I'm talking about an October 13th again here. October 13th, here, 2018. Um, pardon me? You've already got October 13, 2018 written up there. Right there, right. Right there where you're okay, so something's off, something's off here. But uh, okay, let, let's just move on to the next page because I know I have it explained over here. This is what I was grappling with the, the past couple days um, is sorting through this. You have a, two charts here. These are pretty good charts. Um, one of them is the Italian camp meeting from 2017, and this, the line underneath it is the Italian camp meeting from 2018. And so, from June 15th, which would be June 15th here, um, to October 13th, it's got to be 2018. That, that's what I thought. Um, so we raised the other one. No, 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 no. I know, I know what I'm getting mixed up. I know what I'm getting mixed up. Okay. This is okay. We can leave that there. What I was trying to incorporate was that Daniel, Brazilian Daniel, just through impressions, comes to understand that the midnight cry message is going to be given in the United States on October 13th, 2018. Okay. And that is as we're saying, how many days? 120 days from here, okay? But he gets impressed that the Midnight Cry message is going to be confirmed on October 13, 2018. No. He says 126 days after June 9th on yeah. October 13th. Okay, if, if, if you want to do it that way, I'll do that for you. Yeah. 100 and June 9th is here. And it's six days before June 15th. So 6 and 120 is 126. Okay, you can do it either way. But that's not what I'm getting to. This is, this would be 120 to here. Okay, but Daniel is so convicted of this that he goes and he looks up, he, he checks out stuff and he puts it on his computer screen and takes a screenshot. He's got a screenshot that when he came under the conviction that October 13th is when the midnight crime message would be confirmed, it was on July 27th, 2018. What's July 27th? It's like probably the strongest symbol of Islam. So on July 27, 2018, he comes under conviction. He's been grappling with these things that on October 13th is when the midnight cry message is going to be established. And he was right. Okay, he was right. Um, and from October 13th, I think I already put this in place, to November 9th, maybe I haven't, is... 391 and a half days and from November 9th, 2019 to July 18th I already have it, it's 252 days okay from June 10th 100, from, from here, June 9th slash 10th right here, this is what you're talking about, I had it in the notes, to here is 126 days. This is six days that goes with this 120. Okay. Um, okay, we've covered all that. And you have a, a fairly clear let me add one thing to this. October 13th, 18th is what? On the, the third graph there, it's the 15th day of the 8th month. What's the 15th day 
of the eighth month? Midnight. It's August 15th. It's a symbol of the midnight cry. It's August, August 15th, Exeter camp meeting. Okay, so it's, it's identifying that this is when the midnight cry is, is put in place. Um, and from June 9th, in this camp meeting, from June 9th to October 13th is 126 days. That the dead center of this, okay, there's another chiastic structure. There was a chiastic structure here in the first Italian camp meeting, and there was a 126 in the first Italian camp meeting, right? And there's a 126 in this camp, uh, camp meeting as well, from June 9th slash 10th to October 13th is 126 days, and what also is the dead center of that chiastic structure? August 11th. Okay, so that's this one. Boy, it's hard. All I'm trying to do is the straight line to keep it simple. And I'm getting it cluttered. But, okay. Next quote. October 13th, uh, the Fatima's date. October 13th. Isn't that a date for the Is Fatima? the miracle of Fatima in, yeah. two, in, in um, 1917. Yeah. I just saw October 13th. Yeah, yeah. It's October 13th. The miracles began on May 13th, and she would meet with the children every 13th of the month thereafter, and the miracle was on October 13th. Um, okay, so next page. This, this particular quote, I'm sure I've already put in, the, uh, we just lost the screen here. I know, I just... Okay, so the, we put this in the record in this study before, but I want to I emphasize it. This is, this is my argument about this quote. Yes? Okay. All right, they're back. This is my argument about this quote, is that... Let me take your temperature first. Okay. Yeah, so you have to mute yourself. You're not muted any longer, Sister Patty, I guess. Okay. All right. You need to mute. Hit your space bar. No, hit just mute. Hit mute. Space bar unmutes them. Space bar unmutes them. <laughs> Who, who is it? It's it's Mella. You, you need to mute yourself. No. Click on the end. Well, there isn't the one that has the line around it, the one that's making the noise. Yeah. No. They're all muted. See right here. Okay. Well, we're getting noise even though they're all muted. I'm going to go forward, right? Well, that's going to be. It's lost again. Just continue, please, with the filming. Okay, so here's the point. All of this, all of this that we've done here, I wish it could have been clearer, but it's a, it's a tricky one to present, boils down to this next quote. This next quote means everything to me in connection with this. And this is from Selected Messages, Book 1, page 208. I must bear the messages of warning that God gives me to bear and then leave with leave, then leave with the Lord the results. I must now present the matter in all its bearings, for the people of God must not be despoiled. We are God's commandment keeping people. For the past 50 years, every phase of heresy has been brought to bear upon us to becloud our minds regarding the teaching of the Word, especially concerning the ministry of Christ in the heavenly sanctuary and the message of heaven for these last days, as given by the angels of the 14th chapter of Revelation. Messages of every order and kind have been urged upon Seventh-day Adventists to take the place of truth, which point by point 
has been sought out by prayerful study and testified to by the miracle working power of the Lord. But the way marks which have made us what we are are to be preserved and they will be preserved as God has signified through his word and the testimony of his spirit. He calls upon us to hold firmly with the grip of faith to the fundamental principles that are based upon unquestionable authority. I'm saying that these waymarks, point by point, testify to the miracle working power of God. There is no way that these numerical phenomenons could be a coincidence. God is testifying to the validity of these Waymarks, and that is the weight of evidence that we must stand upon as we consider why there was a prohibition in the past on time setting. Okay, that, that, that's, this is just it. You can't get away from the Lord walking us through this, um, this history. So, for those of you that have been watching and you've been broken down, I, we probably should have, I should have said this at the beginning. This part of the United States has had some really powerful thunderstorms the past couple days, including last night. There were many, they said, I heard on the way over here, 50 tornadoes in this part of the United States last night. So our, the power on our property was off and we got here and we were having difficulty connecting to the internet. So if you've been having difficulty staying connected with the live streaming, that's what's going on, um, and that's why we're not waiting for you any longer. We're just moving forward. Okay, one other quote, and um, this is General Conference Daily Bulletin, April 1st, 1897. And this question, what of the night in the past, we've defined many times in this movement. When the watchman is asked what of the night, it's a symbol of the close of probation. Okay, the night cometh when no, no man can work. So this question, what of the night, is a question about the coming close of probation. And she's, it's a biblical expression that Sister White's going to use. She says, what of the night? Do I discern the import of these messages? Do I understand the place they occupy in the closing work of the great remedial system? And I wonder if we understand that answer, that question, that thought. Uh, because when I get on these chat groups personally, sometimes I think it doesn't seem like we really understand uh, where we're at in the time period of verse history. Um, it's, we don't understand the import of these messages. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. Am I so familiar with the sure word of prophecy that I can see the events transpiring around me in the events transpiring around me, positive evidence that the coming king is even at the door? Do I sense the responsibility that rests upon me in view of the light God has given? Am I using every talent entrusted to me as his steward in well-directed effort to rescue the perishing? Or am I lukewarm and indifferent, partly mixed up with the wicked world, using the means and ability God has given me, largely in self-gratification, caring more for my own ease and comfort than for the advancement of his cause? Am I by my course strengthening the conviction that has been gaining ground in the world that Seventh-day Adventists are giving the trumpet an uncertain sound and are following in the path of worldlings? Now, the, the, what's been going on in the chat rooms here recently, I brought that up, but when I picked this quote, this quote, I wasn't thinking about the chat rooms at all, but as I'm reading it, it's speaking to, to the fruits of where this movement, some of us may be, so it's kind of timely. But here's the part I wanted to get to. We hear the footsteps of an approaching God to punish the world for their iniquity. I'm saying that these are the footsteps of an approaching God and so are the judgments, the 50, her the 50 tornadoes last night, uh, the pandemic, uh, the economic instability. These are the footsteps of an approaching God. The end of time is close upon us. The world's inhabitants are being bound in bundles to be burned. Shall you be bound with the tares? Do you realize that every year thousands and thousands and ten, ti ten times ten thousand souls are perishing, dying in their sins? 
The plagues and judgments of God are already doing their work, and souls are going to ruin because the light of truth has not been flashed upon their pathway. General Conference, Daily Bulletin, April 1st, 1897. So, where I wanted to get to, and I'm already five minutes over time, is I wanted to go now and address what I said about Stephen. I, I use Stephen, I kind of use it as a hook to suggest that he had moved the pillars of Adventism and that he may have been moving his neighbor's landmarks and it was wrong to keep everyone's attention on Sabbath. Uh, but the Lord used him to move a waymark. And we need to recognize what that movement represents to us. And in order to do that, would take um, and it, it takes more time than I'm willing to take right now. So I'm going to tell you, this is where we'll start in our next presentation, but I'm going to tell you what the next presentation is, and you have the notes you can read through and see the logic. I'll tell you what the, the logic of this presentation is, and you can check it out in advance of tomorrow's presentation. I'm saying over here, and you have this, you'll have a chart on page six of your notes, that what Stephen came to understand was that on October 22nd, 1844, that the Day of Atonement that began there, at one level, I'm going to say it that way, to November 9th, 1849, there was something that went on here. And this was a period of 1844 days. So once again, we have this phenomenon. We have 1844 waymark, then 1844 days takes us to November 9th. And when we looked at this study of Stevens, we were in the mindset that what it was teaching us is that on October 22nd, 1844, the door closed on the foolish virgins, and therefore, when you get to hear probations closed. But based upon the prophecy of the 126, I came to identify, and I'm sure that it's correct, that on October 22nd, 1844, this history began to be repeated, and it also took us to November 9th, 2019. Here in this history, there was a misconception that caused them, prevented them from seeing things correctly. Here in this history, there was a misconception that prevented us from seeing things correctly. I'm going to argue that. And this also is 1844 days. So when we got to this history here, we were confronted with what went on on November 9, 2019, and we were perplexed. Because we've been understanding, held in common with everyone else in this movement, that probably the door closed here, but I, I know one of, the, one of their key players was saying the door closed here, door closed here on the leadership, uh, but here for sure, door closes, door closes, this is Rafia, door closes down here, uh, based upon this history. But that was a wrong application of this history. So we were doing the same thing the Millerites did. We had a, a, a misconception about what was going to be fulfilled here, just as the Millerites did. And I'm saying that here, with the introduction of the 1850 chart, this history was telling us that there was more light to come. And the light that was going to come was on the 2520 in 1856 with Hiram Edson but the Millerites would not follow on and accept the light. So, here, in this history, this chart represents taking it outside of Adventism. Taking it out of Millerite Adventism. So, I'm saying when we get to this history, the Lord moved the pillar. And so, in this study, what we'll do, on page four of your notes, I'm saying that 1844 was a central, central pillar, 
And it's getting moved in the sense that we're not just looking at, at a point in time. We're saying that this way mark represents a period of time. And a period of time that leads God's people to the point where they're going to take the message outside of themselves to the world. And what we're going to take outside of ourselves, what did we understand? What comes 252 days after this? July 18th. And who, who's this message going to? The world. Nashville. I happen to believe this is more of a testimony for the Levites. The Levites but it is going to because the Levites are going to see there's a group of people that have a grasp on the prophetic light. Yeah. But it doesn't mean anything if you don't actually give the warning message to Nashville. Right. And Nashville is not Adventism. Okay, so this study here, it's the waymarks. We're going to talk about pillars being waymarks. Uh, central pillar um, being for Adventism being Daniel 8.14. Then on the bottom of page 4, God's leading. This pillar was what led God's people um, in the wilderness. And then I'll go back to... 9-11, because this is where some of the mis misconceptions began. At 9-11, we were to eat the little book. And we're going to walk through what we understood at that point in time. And you can see the references. The eating of the look little book was the comp comprehending the message. Okay, but in Ezekiel's passage, when Ezekiel ate the book from chapter 2 into chapter 3, verse 5 says, For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. We understood from this point on that our message was to Adventism exclusively. And we took flack for that. Okay, it, it began the parting of the ways. The first re rebellion of the Omega, the first argument that took place in this movement was over this subject. Okay, um, and I want you to see that also we come across Jeremiah 15 and we're going to look at these verses, verses 16 through 21. But in verse, we're going to spend a little bit of time on verse 20. And in your notes, I have that all printed out. It says, And I will make unto thee a fenced brazen wall. I'm going to say that we became a brazen wall right here. And the reason that we became, I don't know, the reason is because we're going to take a lot of flack from this point on. But prophetically, the reason that this wall is marked, why is this wall marked here? if I'm applying it right, and I am, why is this wall marked here? What is this? This is the 30th year of this movement. And when did this movement begin? Midnight, 1989. This is midnight, 2019. What happened on midnight, 1989? A wall came down, and here a wall is going up. Okay, so this is, this is tying into these four kingdoms in Daniel 11. Okay, this is the beginning of the end of Russia. But it's also when this movement becomes a brazen wall. And uh, then we're going to look at internal work. We came to understand in this history from reading the little book that in the time of Moses, the time of Christ, and the time of the Millerites, we had three witnesses that when the Lord was entering into a covenant with the people, number one, he was always passing by a former covenant people in all three of those histories, teaching us that when he was entering into covenant with the 144,000, he would be passing by Adventism. But also teaching that when the Lord was in the process of entering into covenant, and he, when you eat, you're entering into covenant, there's also always an exclusive internal work. And that was our primary witness for the message only going to Adventism. Okay, so he told us through his word in this history, stay in your tents. This message is just for Adventism. And you have to stay in your tent until the pillar moves. And on November 9th, right here, the pillar moved. Because the Millerite history told us that on November 9, 1849, the pillar moved to 
outside of their movement. This is where their internal work ended. This is where our internal work is ending. But we were dull and hard of hearing, okay? So he had to, he had to also give us a secondary crisis to make sure that we seen it, and that's called the Omega Movement. Mm -hmm. The Omega Movement is teaching that exact thing. They're teaching that on November 9, 2019, if you didn't agree with them, you were lost, but now they have a work to the world of social justice, so they're actually even teaching that, that they have a work for the world on November 9th. Uh, that's interesting parallel, but I could care less. Okay, but I, I, it, it's, it's interesting parallel because back here in this midnight chiasm, that begins on 9-7 and goes to January 11th, 63 and 63. What did they do? Well, one of the things, they did several things in this history. On August 29th leading up to this, August 29th, they introduced, whether they said it or not, they, they introduced... Um, they joined themselves with the woke movement. And the woke movement is, is nothing more than Catholic um, Jesuit theology. It's, it was called in the Ronald Reagan years... Liberation. What? Liberation. Liberation theology. Okay, and it's using the poor and the downtrodden of, of the social system to produce a revolution to overthrow the powers that be. And the term for this is woke. Okay, and they woke. The woke movement is right here. They're waking up with their counterfeit Lateran message. They're waking up uh, when we're waking up at our midnight cry message. And this was exactly, this is where Parminder, Thabot, and Tess, um, I don't think Marco was there. Was maybe he was, but those three were there and chastised Odilio and Stephen for the message of July 18th and said it's heresy. And this is exactly 220 years since August 29th, 1789 when the Pope that received the deadly wound died. And Catholicism has been restored here. He woke up. He, he woke up. He come out of it. He's been resurrected. And he, he's resurrected in this movement that, that, this, that has left, this new movement, um, and has begun to implement Catholicism. Okay, so this is going on. So the Lord made sure, that it, there's reason to touch on this, the Lord made sure in this history that the Omega movement was active in order to force us to shake off the disappointment of this history. That's Jeremiah 15. Jeremiah 15 is, is clear about that. Go ahead. 1799. 1799. Thank you. Okay, so it, it becomes a controversy between us and them. And what, was the, what did the Lord do immediately? What he did, among other things, is he made it, rec he confirmed it, at least in my heart, and I put it in the public record over and over, that for them, this is the, the offering of the prophet of Baal and the priests of the grove. And the offering of Elijah is here. Okay, so suddenly, this message becomes the controversy. We're forced to grapple with this message. And at some point in time, we wake up to the fact, wow, this isn't a message for Adventism. This is a message for the world. And what I'm saying is right here, the pillar moved. This that's what we history, to see. This history is telling us now you're going to the world. You've been in your tents. You've had the internal exclusive work. That's what this is about. Now you've got a message for the world. We've, we've been awakened to that. And because I'm here, I'll just do one more thing. One, little, one more little thing and be done. Remember what we said 
I, I, I'll pass. Okay. Because uh, it takes more time now that I'm thinking about it in my head. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we thank you for the light that you're opening up. We hear the footsteps. We see the judgments. Um, we fear for our lack of ability to let those footsteps bring conviction on us about our personal need of preparation and our responsibilities. Help us to do this very thing. We, we ask for a blessing upon this message as it goes out over the internet. And uh, we ask that the people that are following this would be blessed with light that would better prepare them to stand in, these, in the crisis that's underway. In Jesus' name, amen.